trope, a common or overused theme or device, a cliché. Every form of expression has these, and professional wrestling is no different. However, not all tropes are created equal, as there are some that I say are better off being forgotten. Like what, you ask? Well... One of the launch videos for this very channel was covering those professional wrestling tropes that I just can't stand. And not surprisingly enough, those seven weren't the only ones that I've had enough of. And since the supporters over on Patreon voted to see a follow-up on that very episode, well, that lands us to where we are today. Now, last time, it was all about the tropes that I want to see banished from the world of professional wrestling forever. And while my stance on those hasn't changed, today the sentencing isn't going to be quite so harsh. At least not for all of these entries, as some of them I just want to take a long hiatus and would be okay if they came back after… several decades. But speaking of the entries, let's just get into the list. I hate the idea that some people just expect perfectly good tag teams to break up. Despite how much chemistry wrestlers have, or how much they may enjoy traveling together, or enjoy being a team, some fans just view being split up as an inevitable part of being a paired up wrestling star. And over recent years, we've seen teams like Enzo and Cass, Otis and Tucker, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, among many others, all get broken up and none were the better for it. And it's even worse when they break away from one tag team only to form another. Now, let me make this clear, there is nothing wrong with being a career tag team wrestler. And while an occasional tag team breakup can be done to great effect, doing it arbitrarily and without direction for both partners really doesn't help anyone. I've often said that every promotion has its own set of booking rules, and what works for one company may not work for another. And when it comes to King's Road's style, while it's perfectly fine in All Japan Pro Wrestling, it's a style that I quite frankly really don't trust a lot of other people to do correctly. The idea that a fighting spirit gives a wrestler the ability to kick out of match-ending moves can be used well under the right conditions, but it takes an elaborate level of booking and planning which is something that not every company is capable of. Worse yet the term fighting spirit has been incorrectly used by some fans in order to justify any match they like that has plenty of no selling in it. Trust me, the term doesn't always apply. I'm not trying to pile on to Jim Ross's comments about wrestlers, heels and faces, enemies and rivals standing shoulder to shoulder waiting to catch another wrestler who just leaps into their arms, although I do agree. Instead, I want to bring up another issue, which is also my primary issue with dives, and it's that they're really not the safest thing to do. Now, unlike other detractors, I will admit that no matter how many times we see it, dives do tend to get pots from live crowds, meaning that I do understand why it gets done. However, during a time when live crowds aren't really much of an option, why were so many people still doing it? Dives didn't get any safer with less fans in attendance, so why risk it? Well, as far as I'm concerned, they shouldn't have. WWE by far and away has earned a reputation for producing great video packages that recap stories and highlight feuds. However, that doesn't mean I need to be oversaturated with them. Here's a common tale. It's Wednesday night, I turn on the television to watch some wrestling, but which show shall I choose? Well, NXT starts with their opening signature, followed by a recap package from last week that then goes into either the announce panel welcoming us to the show, or a promo, or both. Meanwhile, over on AEW, normal Normally, I'm already in the middle of a match while all this is going on. And yes, AEW doesn't always have a match during the first two minutes of the program, and NXT does sometimes get right down to business and overall has been getting better with this kind of thing. But in general, I don't need to see a slow motion filtered video with epic music and echoey sound bites of dialogue played all the time. Furthermore, in the case of Raw, as bad as the constant recaps of what happened last week are, it's even worse when they feel the need to replay things that already happened earlier in the night. But my biggest gripe with all this is when there's absolutely no reason as to why I'm watching this one specific video package right here and now. For example, they show a recap of the brutal attack or the vicious assault on Johnny Gargano or Drew McIntyre or whoever, and after the video ends, it leads right to a match with… completely different people. 
It's one thing if we get a tail of the tape or something to put the next match into context. That I'm perfectly okay with, and in fact, I'm encouraging them to do that more. But when it's done just for the sake of being done and without a point of reference, I just tend to tune out. Let's make this perfectly clear. I in no way, shape, or form want them to get rid of the Royal Rumble, and I also actively want the King of the Ring being brought back on pay-per-view. However, I am saying that not every gimmick match needs its own annual special. Some specialty gimmick matches only felt special because of how rare they were. But when you force a yearly tradition for a match that doesn't always have a story that's right for it, or a story that would be great for a specific gimmick match, but it isn't happening at the right time of year, this pigeonholes everything. So if you ask me, WWE, you can take your TLCs and save them for when it matters, because some of us remember when the Dudleys, the Hardys, and Edge and Christian made that match mean something, which is also true for far too many other gimmick bouts. In the complete opposite direction of the fighting spirit, where a wrestler builds up an immunity to finishers over time, how is it that there are also so many wrestlers that are still susceptible to repeatedly losing via roll-up? And to be technical, they're really losing via schoolboy, as the roll-up is just another name for the O'Connor roll. But I digress. Catching someone with a surprise pin doesn't protect them, and it doesn't make them look strong in defeat either. It just makes them look inept. And since it's also looked at as a fluke win, it really doesn't help the winning party look all that great either. The schoolboy has just become lazy booking, and in an attempt to not damage anyone too badly, you ultimately just end up not getting anyone over, making the whole thing completely pointless. Especially considering how often this finish gets booked to happen. Several months ago, I made a joke about the light emitting diode slowly taking over WWE. Man, I didn't know how right I was, with the crowd itself eventually getting snatched by the LED invasion. Now yes, I do feel the Thunderdome is a much safer solution to WWE's crowd problem, so I'm not really knocking that, I'm just kidding. But outside of that, I have to say that enough is enough already. I don't need LEDs on the ring apron or the ring post or the entire stage being just one big LED sheet. WWE, it doesn't look nearly as good as you think it does. LEDs are an awesome advancement in lighting technology, but there's no need to overuse them and shove them in everybody's face, especially since they're pretty common. In fact, this show is being lit by LEDs right now. See? But that doesn't mean you need to show them off as much as you possibly can. And plus, I'm sure there are plenty of other fans who are just like me and they miss actual wrestling sets and actual wrestling set pieces. Those were pretty cool. Can we please have them back? Please? Well, there you go. Seven more tropes that I definitely want to see go away in professional wrestling. But what are some that you don't like? Let me know down in the comments. And don't forget to please like this video as well as subscribing right here to Dave Knows Wrestling. It really does help out the channel. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, Dave Knows.